This is a lecture on how to break down and analyze an advertisement for the upcoming paper that is due next week. We will take this in a series of steps. So before really going into this, make sure you have watched the commercial that was assigned with this lecture, simply so you can follow along as we break down that as a hypothetical advertisement for this paper in the event that it was offered. The first thing that you want to do when you analyze an, ad an advertisement like this is to establish the claim, as you can see here with the yellow post-it. So we already practiced this a little bit last week. Um, claims are inferential arguments. A claim is an argument. That's the number one thing to remember when I ask in a paper or on a prompt, you know, what the claim is. You will always be asked um, to determine the argument. It's not so much about purpose, that's something separate in an advertisement, but a claim is like an investigation of an argument that warrants further discussion. And so, as a result, all arguments have a claim embedded within them. And your task is to determine what a commercial's claim is. The claim is not the same as the purpose in that the purpose is always to sell a product. That's obvious. Congratulations, you have half a brain if you can deduce that. Determining the argument behind that purchase, however, is where you arrive at claim. And your job is going to be to determine that. So. Um, what ideas or values are also sold alongside the product is a very helpful question to ask yourself when it comes to determining the claim. So the iPad Air commercial obviously is trying to get you to buy an iPad, but they're also trying to sell you on the idea of creativity, on innovation, on this idea of art and technology intersecting, if you paid attention to the speech that's recited in the background of that, of that video. It's done to evoke emotion and also to sell you the idea that if you buy this Air, this, this iPad Air, you are actually purchasing the ability to create, which is an interesting argument in and of itself because can one actually purchase that or is that an inborn, innate ability separate from the tools that we are given? That in and of itself is a very interesting argument you might want to explore in a paper like this. Um, but another way to do this is to also determine what the message of the commercial is, as you can see on the final bullet point here. So what are what um, message or theme are they trying to sell you? What moral of the story are they trying to sell you in an advertisement like that? So when you watch a commercial or you're assigned commercial, your job is to start thinking in these terms as you watch it. So how do you find it? How do you think in those terms? Start with purpose. It's to sell a product, but then ask what else, right? So what else is being sold here? What else is going on here? What other arguments are implied by this advertisement? So go beyond determining what's going on and determine what it means. If you can tell me what's going on in an advertisement, it's kind of like telling me the purpose. I already know that, and you should too, because you have more than half a brain. Um, don't just say this happens, this happens, this happens, there's all these colors, here's the effect, the end. It's more about saying, so here's what happens, here's what that signifies in terms of an argument. Summary is telling me what's going on. If you can just summarize in detail, you will drive yourself and me crazy with the creation of this paper. But if you can tell me what something means in an advertisement as far as an argument, that's analysis. And that's how you know you've established a difference between these two uh, lines of thinking when it comes to uh, advertisements. Another thing that you should do while you're determining the claim is to get ideas onto paper. Notes and brainstorming is a big part of this before you actually go to draft. Don't watch a commercial, sit down and try to write a paper about it. It doesn't work that way. So first make an observation, follow it with an interpretation. Oh, I see that there's Lots of uh, quick, beautiful lighting in this that illuminates certain activities. I wonder what that means. Well, does it perhaps mean that all creative acts have to happen in the light and the iPad kind of brings the light to it? Uh, list potential emotional responses the advertisement wants its audience to feel and then connect them to verbal and visual elements. So list the feelings that you're supposed to get, you know, that the iPad Air commercial is supposed to kind of evoke chills in you and make you want to reach out and create and be a poet, right? We don't write poetry because it's cute. We write it because we're members of the human race is this crazy opening line to any sort of speech. And so what does that mean? How is the iPad Air use like poetry? And then you would go through and you would look for poetic elements, right? If that's the line 
in the advertisement to connect it back to a claim. And lastly, pay attention to repeated elements. What are they supposed to mean if they keep popping up? So the iPad is placed as a product throughout that commercial. An activity happens and then an iPad is participating in the activity, either simulating it or helping the activity be better. It's like there's a task that you want to undertake that's creative and the iPad can help you make it a better experience. It enhances the reality, even though the iPad is simulating what's going on in the actual activity, if you go back and look at each of those frames. Okay, so after we establish a claim, we have to start thinking about evidence. And these, this includes the elements of the commercial. So you would map out verbal and visual elements that support the inference you're making about the claim. That's why starting with argument helps first, because then it's a matter of going back and kind of plugging the pieces in. This is the evidence for the argument. And use the advertisement itself to support the claims that you believe you're making about it. That's the nice thing is you don't have to look outside of this just yet. Start with your initial impressions and then understand how each of these elements is lining up with the argument that you think this advertisement is making. Uh, important elements include symbols, colors, arrangement, music, tone, uh, verbal and visual, right? That's why you had that assignment last week. It, they can kind of be broken down into one thing or another. Um, so how do you pick up on those elements? Well, you watch it. You watch it again and again and again. So on your first few watches, I would say to record your initial impressions and observations. Then you start to ask, well, why this and why not that? You know, why Robin Williams and that speech from the movie The Dead Poet Society, if you recognize the speech? Uh, why not some other speech? Why not some other voiceover? What are they trying to do here? And then connect the element in question to the claim and the purpose of the advertisement. And again, you know, put elements in context. Why do they matter for the time? This is where you start to kind of branch out. Okay, so what's What's Apple participating in broadly about the discussions we have about art and technology? Uh, what led to the creation of that commercial? What other arguments influenced the way this advertisement was made? And that's where you would start to branch out and look at other things in the form of research, which is why you have a research component to this paper. So here we are getting started on research. Uh, research helps you establish context. Uh, you should first determine what others have said about the advertisement in question and do their conclusions line up with your own. You know, ask why or why not? How come this person is seeing this advertisement so differently than I do? Is it because they're smarter than me? Is it because they have experience? Well, that may not be the case. You know, you might just have a fundamentally different take on this advertisement because your worldview is different. And that's fine because then you can craft an argument against that. If you find an, a critic that has also analyzed your advertisement and you find yourself nodding along and saying yes, 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 make sure that you can add something to that discussion if you decide to use that as one of your paper, as one of your sources for this paper. Um, more research that can go into this uh, involves like doing some homework on the ethos of the company, which means like the reputation that that company is trying to build for itself. Apple tries to build a reputation of being the company of creative people, right? The, the latest and greatest cutting edge technology for creative minded people and their designs are always different. They always look really sleek and they're constantly trying to show themselves as just a little bit offbeat compared to their competitors. Even though tons and tons of people use their product, they like to kind of frame it in the form of like nonconformity. So what is the brand or product known for? Uh, and you might know this kind of off the top of your head or you might not, kind of depending on what commercial you signed up for. What kind of reputation are they trying to uphold or build or perhaps rehabilitate? Some companies experience a fall and then they have to cre re recreate themselves in some way with some new advertising pitch that draws people back in. And how does the public view this entity is also part of the research here. Each of the commercials that were possibilities for this paper have been written about a lot. They're kind of famous, either in their time or long-standing. They garnered a lot of public attention at the time and afterward. So you should not be short on sources for this paper. You should find a lot of arguments surrounding the commercial that you decided to write about. 
So from there, after doing some research, you kind of have to construct an argument before you can get started. And this is also in the form of like notes and brainstorming. So you want to synthesize in that you line up your claim against others that involves or against another that involves interpreting the significance and the message of your chosen advertisement. So you have kind of two modes of building a thesis, roughly. How do you respond? Well, you can either disagree over here, you know, with what someone said about your commercial, and you can pose a counter argument. Your thesis can function as a counter. X claims Y about the commercial, but in reality, Z is what's going on, and here's how. You know, that's kind of the line of argument that you can take. Or you can agree, and this can be a little bit trickier. So add to the argument so you aren't just parroting someone else's conclusions, because that's not real analysis. That just shows me that you know how to smile and nod with someone. X claims Y about the commercial, and this is true. In addition, Z is going on, and here's how. Think of agreement as yes and, kind of like improv, if you're familiar with that form of comedy. When you're improving with someone and they put something out there for you to respond to, always say yes to it and add to it. You should draft your thesis with focus and precision as best you can and ask yourself, what will readers encounter in my argument? So this is like the map for the paper. The thesis commands the direction of the paper. What visual and verbal elements warrant talking points to support the claim? Remember, you only have four to six pages to write, and I know that feels like much longer than this, I believe, essay, but ultimately, it really isn't that much. And so you have to pick and choose carefully what's going to go into this paper and what you may have to leave behind because it doesn't exactly serve you. Okay, so we should talk about those moving parts. The first, oops, the first is to focus on the purpose of your argument. You should prove a counter argument to an existing claim about the commercial or you can prove the correctness of an existing claim about the commercial with more information or more insight as I previously mentioned. And remember that item two over here is usually harder than item one um, simply because you have to bring something new to the table otherwise you're just copying, you know, and we don't want that. So determining what elements to discuss in your paper is also important and after you determine your claim, you have to figure out which of those elements is best going to serve you. So after you write down all the verbal and visual elements and kind of brainstorm, then it's time to eliminate things and choose things that maybe warrant further discussion in the paper. Always go with this first and foremost. What best serves my thesis? If I'm making this claim, I have to look for these elements to back it up. Uh, what would help my argument, but only peripherally? Um, you probably don't want lots of discussion in there about this element or that element if it's there, but it's not really relevant to your argument. This is what we would call filler. We don't need filler in this paper. Please don't have that. There's a lot of content to this paper, and students sometimes just dump things into it that don't need to be there. And last but not least, what isn't relevant to my argument at all, but is interesting. Unfortunately, this will be a reality. You can't just fight interesting things in this paper. You have to talk about relevant elements, verbal and visual, that relate to the claim. And of course, on top of that is another moving part, additional research. So integrate your sources to work for your argument. That's the nice thing about having outside voices. It's like they're expert witnesses for your paper. Um, your sources can be about advertising in general or about your commercial specifically. You're not confined to sources only about your ad, but you can apply something that's written about advertising techniques in general if you find that it fits your argument and you can make it work for you. Um, make sure that you're examining your uh, sources for ethos. They should be written academically and by people who know what they're talking about. So I really don't want to hear mommy bloggers in this paper because their voices are very different than the one that should characterize your writing. Um, you know, and, and blog writing in and of itself is kind of a casual form of writing, even if it's long form. And mommy bloggers, again, as an example, don't really have credentials to speak about this. So look for stuff that's credible in that it, it's going to match the tone of your paper as well. You want to aim for thinkers that will help you and not hinder you. Not that mommy bloggers don't have a place in the universe, they just don't have a place in this paper.